Hello Internet, Adopted Mike here, and in this video it's going to be the part two of my server build. This is a Windows Home Server 2011 build that I did in a previous video, and we are going to be installing Windows Home Server 2011. And since I chose in the build uh, not to have an optical drive, I'm going to be using this one up here to boot from. Uh, definitely if you have one I prefer it because I think it's kind of a waste to have an optical drive in a, the server anyway so at least this way I can save 15 bucks by not having an optical drive and I can just use this one that I have hanging around. So anyway let's get started. So in the jewel case we have two CDs uh, or excuse me they're probably actually DVD. Yep, they are DVDs. We've got the 64-bit uh, software, which is the only way Windows Home Server 2011 comes. And then we also have a client computer restore. Um, so this way if you do backups to the server and the client computer dies, then you would use this disk in the client computer to uh, restore the image of the, uh, the drive of the failed computer. Okay, so anyway, Basically, we're going to go with the 64-bit install. One thing I'd like to note here, it's going to depend on your BIOS, but you're going to have to select in your BIOS to actually boot from the USB CD-ROM in this particular case like I'm using. And not all BIOSes will do it, but most of the newer ones will, so you definitely are going to have to uh, select that option. And there we are, booting from the uh, USB CD-ROM. Actually, I didn't even have to go into the BIOS. It actually did it by itself, recognized the drive was there, and went to look for an operating system, and here we go. So we'll fast forward a little bit and get to the initial setup. Now we're within the setup program, so we are going to select a new installation. So what we're going to do is we are going to install Windows on this disk 1. You can see disk 0 is 3.7 um, gigabytes. So, um, excuse me, 3.7 terabytes, I'm sorry, yeah, 3,700 gigabytes. And then the second drive, the disk 1, is 167 gigabytes. So we will select that and install. So now we've started the installation process. If anybody's ever installed Windows 7, this should be a familiar screen as it copies all the files and does all of its stuff to uh, all the way up to the completing the installation. Okay, so after some other prompts, we changed the time, stuff like that. Pretty easy stuff. Your server is now ready to use and at each computer in your network you can click wherever you called your server. I just called mine server to start with. Connect and then uh, HTTP slash slash the name slash connect and it will connect it to this server. And then we have the uh, standard desktop here. And it looks like we've uh, connected to the internet, no problem. And now it's time to uh, check for updates which I would highly recommend doing and I also um, you also have to enter the key at some point as well too so just like any other operating system updates just go through them it'll probably restart several times um, and until there's no more updates to install so now all the updates are installed and we can move on to um, doing some configuring of the operating system. So we'll begin by logging in. And there we go. So the first place to start, or that I start anyway, is I uh, come over here to the dashboard.
And so we've got to complete these tasks. These are the getting started tasks. You, I guess you don't have to, but this is a good start. I've done a couple of these already. I've set my sharing options. I configured my media settings. Um, setting up a server backup that's pretty important we'll get into that a little bit and but I've already did got the updates in the earlier part of this video so let's go next set up server backup okay well this is for the servers backup obviously and all the data on the server um, you know even though I have like a, a raid array in here the raid is not a backup so I would still recommend uh, an external USB hard drive or something to have the server back all the data up to again. So basically, you could end up with triple. Um, you could end up with what's on your client, and then the client backing up to the server, which I'm going to do in my case, and then the server backing up to the USB drive. So you could end up with three sets of data. A little bit redundant, maybe, but with three sets of data, you should always well knock on wood always be all right I'm not going to set up remote web access uh, I've never done it before and nor do I care to so basically what I'm setting mine up to is to share files and to do backups to the server um, and the easiest way if I found to do backups to the server with the other computers is having the professional edition of Windows or or uh, the ultimate edition of the Windows so and then you can learn more about centralized storage uh, but if you come up to the tabs up here, we go to new u or users. Now I'm going to create a new user account, and I'm going to call this, um, you know, I'll just call this the first user, and I'll give it a password, uh, and boom. Then you have a user. <clears throat> now here you'll set up what the user has access to. Uh, documents, music, pictures, recorded TV, and videos are the default categories. And you can give them read and write, read only, or no access. So, for example, in, maybe in uh, if there was a member of the household that you wanted to have access to the server, but you didn't want them to see the for videos, you would just give them no access. And then, but if you wanted them to be able to write to the video folder, then you give them read write access pretty similar here so for this example I'm only going to allow this particular user say this is a, a guest account and we wanna he can look at my stuff but I don't want him to uh, delete it or add to it so we would just do read only and then we uh, we could not allow remote web access which is I'm not going to allow um, I'll only allow that for certain accounts and then so basically there I've created the account and it's going through and now first user can now access the server it tells you how to do it boom close so now we have the guest account and we have the first user the guest is inactive by default um, I would always recommend creating a uh, user yourself so you can log in uh, to the server remotely um, that way you don't have to come to a terminal or you don't have to come right to the server you could log in from a remote terminal and you would just do that by adding a user account uh, with uh, you know read write access to everything and then you just do a really good password you can also set the password policy here too um, to require certain passwords like this one here must contain at least seven characters letters numbers and symbols you can bring it down to best you can, and then you can just work it down. Any non-blank password is accepted. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you set that up to. It just depends on how tight you want your server to be. I would recommend setting it up to the maximum, because, especially if you enable web access. And then we come over here. We have computers and backup. There's the computer here. Uh, the backup status is not set. You can log in from other clients to the server and make them automatically back up to the server and then that's where the other clients would come in over here as well too and then you could set their uh, backup um, parameters there as far as when to do it and stuff like that we've got server folders and <coughs> excuse me hard drives currently the server folders are here and I do have that raid 10 array here so um, I'm going to definitely want to move the folders over to that RAID array because right now they're set 
to the D drive, uh, which is the second partition of the SSD, and it's only got 107 gigabytes. So I would come here and I would move the folders, and then I would elect to move them to the F server folders. Uh, oh, excuse me. I, this is the uh, client computer backups, I would move them to the F drive and it says there's 3.64 terabytes available so I would click move folder and it's going to move the data and oh yeah and then make sure obviously uh, when you set up a server backup you definitely would want to make sure that you select which folders you want the server to back up so now you can see I have their client computers and then for each one I will move the folder over to the bigger RAID array one by one until they're all done. Now obviously that step was not required um, but you could run out of hard drive space uh, depending on how big the hard drive is that the that you put the operating system on. Since mine was only like 180 gigabytes uh, I only had 107 left, so I, you know, there's nothing wrong with putting a folder on that SSD that's left over, but uh, that wasn't my main intention for this computer. Um, besides, even at uh, at this rate, the RAID 10 array may be uh, fast as an SSD in you know transmitting over the network. I mean. Uh, even, uh, I've only got two one gigabit connections, so the SSD's bottleneck is going to be the network interface anyway. So might as well, you know, take that out of the equation, put it on the hard drives because I think the RAID 10 is going to saturate the two gigabits a second uh, that the network will allow anyway. Here's some you can do add-ins. Um, I'm not going to install any, but you could. Um, how do I install or remove add-ins? and search for add-ins at Microsoft Pinpoint if you wanted to find more. So that pretty much gets us through the dashboard. Uh, there's some common tasks as well too. You can customize a, li a list here, add new user accounts, add another folder like we did before. You can add more folders. For example, I'm going to add a Steam Apps folder. Well, I'll just call it Steam. And then I'll put this is where I I don't know, keep my Steam games. Okay, so there we go. And then uh, server folders, Steam. So then we go to next. Who wants to have access? Um, you know, we can change this later, but for right now, I'll give everybody read access. And then I've added a Steam folder. So then I can put all my Steam uh, games here. And then when you log in remotely, uh, it gives you this list. And to the people that get to go into that folder, they can double click on Steam and then they can um, see all the Steam games that I have or transfer them to their computer or whatnot. Um, yeah, so we come up here, we have warnings. It's going to probably warn me yeah, that important updates should be installed. I haven't, must have not finished all the updates. Uh, the backup is not configured for the server. And there's a scheduled cleanup task for a client computer, uh, which is interesting. It's gonna, yeah, it's funny, but um, okay. And you can refresh that and organize it. And then it kind of helps you get through this. You can ignore the alert as well, too, if you wish. And then server settings over here, we've got uh, the date and time, you know, region, language, country, change install updates, because I always set mine, let me choose whether to install them, because I don't want my server to reboot itself um, without me knowing. You see your Windows is activated, uh, automatically report errors, stuff like that. Media, I turn my media service on. I've got best video streaming quality, just things like that. Home group, if you have a home group, you can create one. Uh, and then here's the remote web access that I don't wish to turn on currently. I mean, so 
pretty simple uh, this is in no way a power user uh, guide here this is very very simple um, which is why some people go for you know Windows Server not home server but I don't even use all of Windows Home Server I use a portion of it uh, my needs are different than others so I definitely didn't need to spring for uh, the big version of Windows Server the big boy I can just keep the little guy here because I really don't need it for much other than backups and some a little bit of media streaming and stuff like that so I just opted you know not to uh, mess with the big dog if I'm not even going to use what the little dog has but uh, yeah so anyway other than that it appears to be just like uh, you know a typical Windows 7 um, you know operating system that tells you you're logged on as a server desktop do not use your server general purpose workstation I would highly recommend that for sure it's not made to be a general purpose workstation um, so definitely just keep that in mind so now basically I just I'm gonna disconnect the monitor and I'm gonna set the server up in a corner and just let it go and I'll start transferring data from my old server over to this new server and then uh, when I get this one up and running and I feel confident I will down the old server and probably uh, sell it or do something like that I don't know yet but uh, until my confidence is built up in this new one I'll definitely keep the old one running as well too uh, and, and uh, but anyway pretty much wraps up uh, like the beginners uh, look at Windows Home Server 2011 uh, definitely want to point that out again uh, this was not intended to be a power users uh, installation guide or setup guide I hope uh, no one is you know pissed off about that um, there are other places to go if you want to see how to hook this thing up or set this thing up differently but uh, it just wasn't you know it's not what I intend to use it for so anyway if you uh, if you like it like the video please if you do not like it Go ahead and dislike the video and put in the comment section why you liked it or disliked it. Uh, let me know if you want to see something else. I'd be more than happy. I read all of my comments. I'd be more than happy to take a look at doing some more videos on servers if I get some uh, positive feedback or some questions. Um, yeah, so that wraps it all up. And as always, thank you for watching.